12 teraflops, 4 teraflops, let's talk flops. What's up everybody, Brad here, and this week has been a buzz with flops. Not flip flops, but teraflops for the next generation of this, which is known as Anaconda and Lockhart, all in the Scarlet console family. Now last week there was a lot of noise about Lockhart not being dead, and it's still coming back, and this week it's all about teraflops. And so this all got kicked off by my buddy Jez, uh, who wrote up this, and I'll throw it up on the screen right here, it says Anaconda is targeting around 12 teraflops of computing power compared to the Xbox One X's 6 teraflops. The Xbox One S has 1.4. Lockhart conversely will sport around four teraflops. Now that might sound a little odd because in that scenario, Lockhart at four teraflops is actually less powerful than the currently shipping Xbox One X. But I think that makes sense and we'll get to that in a second. But I wanna just kind of put some context around here. While I cannot explicitly confirm that 12 teraflops and four teraflops is the absolute definitive target, I can tell you that I have heard figures that align very, very close to this. What I had heard is that Microsoft was targeting around 2X Xbox One X performance and around 4X of Xbox One S performance for Lockhart. And that aligns very, very closely uh, to what he has written here. Now, why does four teraflops for Lockhart make sense? Well, if you think about it, the Lockhart console is not targeting 4K gaming. So it doesn't need that overhead performance to get to uh, the six teraflops that is currently with the Xbox One X for a 4K display, which I keep pointing to uh, behind me. Because they're not targeting 4K, which I do believe they're either targeting 1080p or 1440p will be the marketing mumbo jumbo, they don't need the raw horsepower. Now, don't think that that means it's going to be less powerful or not as good as the Xbox One X. You gotta remember, there's gonna be significant improvements, one, and not only the optimization of the CPU, which I believe is gonna be the same as the Anaconda console, but it might be clocked down a bit lower, um, but it's also going to have a solid state drive as opposed to the spinning rust, rust that currently ships in all Xbox consoles. You're, you've got those platter drives. You're also just gonna have better PCB experiences. Everything about the console will be better minus the raw output, but you're gonna still have that faster loading times. You're still gonna, I believe, uh, I'm curious if ray tracing, I believe will make it into that, but I'm not, can't quite confirm that. But the idea here is that you don't need as much performance because they're targeting a much lower resolution and they're doing all that so that they can have a lower entry price to get into the next generation Xbox family, which makes a lot of sense. Now on the 12 teraflop side for Anaconda, that again aligns to everything that I had. I went back through everything I've heard over the past couple months from reputable locations and it that sounds about right. Now, that could shift wildly. We, we don't know. We are still about 10 months away. I believe we're still a couple months away from being a full spec lockdown at this point. And then I would expect a, a console reveal party or extravaganza uh, maybe four to five-ish months from now uh, is what I'm hearing. But we'll still see. Everything is still fluid at this time. So with all that being said... I think, I think his report is pretty accurate. He's also hearing, uh, which I have heard as well, around 16 gigs of uh, RAM are going to be in the machine with three for the OS and then um, 13 for games, which should give a healthy amount of buffer space for those high performance games. Now, one of the issues we had earlier this year that kind of led to some of the demise or rumors of Lockhart's death is that developers were targeting the Lockhart console and scaling up rather than targeting the Anaconda console and scaling down. I haven't heard how Microsoft has gotten around this or what they're telling developers, but clearly that is going to be something that is on the mind and maybe one of the reasons why they're holding back, I don't know, Microsoft is definitely later in the game of getting their development kits out to publishing third-party publishing parties uh, at, compared to what Sony has done. So we will we'll be curious to see how that shakes out. So uh, the for the Xbox One X by uh, comparison, by the way, has nine gigs for games. So you're going from nine to 13. So, you know, it should be, it not should be, it absolutely will be a better gaming experience than the Xbox One X. The biggest question really becomes now is chip yield. That is a thing that if you're not familiar with it, every time a chip comes out of the factory or the oven or that you will, it gets tested, right? It has to meet certain performance characteristics, right? Everything is on paper of this is what the chip should do. Then you have to actually test it in real world. And then chips get binned. Um, ones that do higher performance get bin. It's called binning. Um, get, you know, a higher tier bin and, and lower tier bins for underperforming chips. 
Microsoft has to make sure that the chip promises from AMD actually align to what they show on paper. Now that process can vary. It could be 11.5 teraflops or it could be 12.5 until those things are rolling off the production line in mass that microsoft won't know the raw horsepower they have a lot of expectations they have engineering samples they have a good idea but mass production versus engineering samples are different things so keep in mind that while these are numbers that are targeted they are not the final iteration and we'll have to see and microsoft potentially may not share uh, what the raw horsepower is. There's no reason they have to publicly externally. Um, although Stadia came out and said, hey, we, we've got more teraflops than um, local consoles. Um, so I would expect that Microsoft come out and try to best them potentially in some capacity, but we will see. So that is what I'm hearing about these numbers. They sound, they sound in the ballpark of what I was expecting. And so we will have to wait and see. I don't think this changes things too much while we wait to see what Sony has uh, under its hood, but we shouldn't have to wait too much longer I don't think, you know, sometime in the spring, both of these companies should be talking a lot more about them because the consoles, both the Anaconda, Lockhart, and, well, I should say all three, and the PlayStation 5 should be launching holiday of next year, and we will see how it all shakes out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch all of you right back here next time.